Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have two great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Battle with HOA over parents' property turns into epic showdown. The second story. Whistleblower stands up to unsafe work conditions, faces boss's accusations, and fights back for workplace safety. The first story is... Father and mother died and a lawyer is saying their property joins an HOA after their death. LTL, throwaway. Details, state, Connecticut. My father moved into a rural area in 1980, a few years after I was born, and soon came my sister. They stayed there ever since. We grew up, etc., etc. Dad died in 2012, and Mom died in December 2018. My sister moved away in 2002 to get married, kids, etc., and doesn't want to be involved in the affairs since I'm the eldest son, and she lives three-fourths of the country away. Over the years, the area was developed and is now more of a suburb. Either way, I take possession of the house through the will, affairs of the state, etc. Basic total control, nothing to worry about. I get a letter in the mail in February that my parents agreed after their death to sell the house, through the trust of the HOA, and the property would be up for sale. I find no such documentation and demand to the lawyer, which is a legit licensed lawyer, is going unanswered to provide the written documentation. I've left a few messages with the admin there, but I'm not putting any effort into it if they're not going to respond. I am not one for sentimental value, and I really am not attached to the house, so if they want it the price is going to be dictated by me, not them. I live a couple towns away and I have no interest in moving in. My house is bigger or even thinking about keeping it. One, my dad was getting senile and might have agreed to something. Two, my mom is a pushover and might have agreed to something. Three, if it isn't in writing, does it mean it's useless? Four, what if they do come after for the sale? Should I just ask for top dollar and or fight making it a non-HOA house in a notion of HOA property? Update, 4-22-2019. After receiving my green slip back and leaving multiple voicemails, I finally got a letter in the mail but it was basically saying it was a verbal agreement. Not gonna fly, good luck. I'm sending a letter today demanding an in-face meeting on the property with the lawyer, HOA members, or I will be asking the Board of Zoning to change it so I can install a wastewater treatment facility. Update two. So after receiving a certified letter at the end of April from the HOA's attorney, he basically ignored me about the verbal agreement details. I contacted my corporate attorney, who I've known for nearly two decades with, and he's got a CT bar license so I'll help if I need to. After not hearing from their attorney for over a couple weeks, leaving calls and messages with his admin, I realized that I was not gonna get what I wanted, which was literally to talk to the guy and get the HOA's documentation. So one last college try at the end of April and nothing still. I got SH to do, and all I got now is a slab and some overgrown lawn, which with the coming of spring and the constant rain is turning into a mud pit. I live two towns over and I don't have time for this. On May 3rd, I sent a notice to the surrounding houses that construction was to begin on a new sewage treatment plant and to contact the HOA board for more information, knowing it would take USPS a day or two. Brought the dozer back on a flatbed and planted it in the driveway where you couldn't miss it. 8 a.m. on Tuesday the next week, got a call from an HOA representative wanting to argue with me in regards to this new plant and so forth about property rights, ownership, etc. Not gonna lie, choice words and yelling ensued, ending with, if your GD lawyer would call me back, we wouldn't be having this discussion. Good luck with the smell. Keep in mind, nothing filed with the town. No real desire to create a sewage treatment plant, but if you want to ignore me, good luck. About 45 minutes later, I get a call on my cell from an attorney, and I swear to God I was talking to a hostage instead of a lawyer. I told him I will see him at my parents' address at 3 p.m., and we'll finish this deal one way or another and bring a laptop. Wanted to argue about not officially meeting in an office, blah, blah, and I hung up. That was on May the 7th. I knew full well why I chose to send the letter on the 3rd, that because on Wednesday coming up the HOA board has its monthly meeting, so I wanted it on the agenda. For about an hour, calls would come in from the attorney's admin wanting to change it to his offices. Wanted to work this out by mail, etc. Nope, 3 p.m. on site. Called my attorney, he luckily was out of court by 11, and would come down. Had lunch with him and headed back to the property. Grabbed a couple of lawn chairs, a folding table from my house, and my attorney brought a laptop and a printer. If you know my attorney, I've known him for decades, and he's a no BS, let's get it done, no mercy kind of guy right from law school. Went from corporate IP to family law, 
and dabbles in real estate. Good guy to know. 225 rolls around and they show up. The lawyer and two board members. One who looks like he should move to God's waiting room, and the other a mid-50s kind of guy, who's probably an orthodontist. We all make introductions and sit, and I say, this is how this is gonna go. You want this property and I want to sell. I'm tired of the games and the non-responsiveness. In the next 15 minutes, you're gonna buy this property pending approval the HOA board majority, and you can do whatever you want with this place. You'll own it free and clear. The orthodontist speaks and attempts to say, as conveyed to us by past board members that your father advised us that the property would automatically be transferred to the HOA upon your parents' death. He actually sounded articulate and with some authority. I like him. Me. What docs do you have to support that? Ortho. Nothing, just witnesses. Goes into a discussion on how it was told to them by board members and that their unresponsiveness was because they thought they were in the clear and no reason to work with me because it was all legal, blah, blah, blah and they were going to get the property by some court decree shortly. I look over to my attorney and he looks back. Well, fortunately for you, that's at least 50% true. You'll get this property, but it's not free. Brass tax, XXXXXX. If you pay all closing costs, and you'll have my signature the minute you have approval. We'll facilitate the docs and the routing wire information. The eyes of the crypt keeper and the ortho went wide, and he said that's a lot of money. We'll have to bring it to the board to vote, but I'm unsure. Good enough for me. We have some preliminary docs and an official letter to present. Looked over at my attorney and was printing the docs away on the table. The lawyer says, Well, it'll take up to 30 days, and the bank check will take as long for an entity of this type if this is approved. My attorney says the best thing I heard in a long time. Love you, Mark. We have e-file capability with three-day turnaround filing to the state, towns, and wire transfers take no more than 15 minutes, unless the feds are backed up. There's no title issue, no liens, no environmental or waste removal issues. It's yours to enjoy as you see fit. I'll be available right after the HOA meeting to file the docs, and Tuesday to receive the transfer. That's why he gets paid. He hands over the docs, standard PNS with the amount just typed in, with our cover letter for the board. I grab the ortho's business card. Apparently, he's a school admin. The other guy is a retired electrician, and the attorneys as well. Well, the board meeting went well. I was told by a resident that it was a lot of arguing about not having documentation, wanting to actually challenge my ownership of the estate and property in court, and eventually the amount. Yeah, I asked a lot, but then again they could have countered and didn't. It was not a good meeting, but in the end it was approved. Apparently another lawyer who was a resident basically told them they had no standing, and I could do whatever I want with it, with or without the board's approval. I don't know if the HOA lawyer was there. My lawyer dropped by 10.15 p.m. at a pub 99, and I signed the docs for the final PNS, and we had beers as he filed online. He said I would get a copy in a week and would file paper copies with the town, but the deal is done when the money is transferred. Today, 8.15 a.m., got a message that the HOA initiated a wire transfer, and around 8.45 got confirmation of receipt of funds. My parents bought the place in December 1980 for $28,500. It served us well and I flipped it for nearly 27 times that. It was a good home, but you have to move on. It'll be built or turned into a park or something, but alas, it's over and done with. Most of it's going to my kids' college and technical school tuition, and the rest to my sister for her kids. Thanks, Dad. Update 3. Time passed like it does, and the property did get a house on it. Yard, fancy fence, and manicured lawn. Well, COVID hit and no one was available for anything, and I had no reason to visit the area since it was not owned by me and my kids had no idea what it was about. Until last month. I was driving through because the highway that connects my town to the city I work in goes straight through my old town. Stopped in to get a tire pressure check, nail in the side wall, but it was in the inner wall. Put some air in the tire and get some drinks and lo and behold one of my old high school friends was working at the Cumbies and I haven't seen her in decades. She didn't know me for an instant but her name tag gave it away to me and we started talking. I was in no rush. Apparently the HOA that was running the place got caught in some shading dealings with some monies. The board members about two years previously were asked about the HOA financials, distributions, etc., and all got tied up in some legal quagmire due to them not producing these reports. Apparently, some of the board members were embezzling and overcharging the HOA from their friends' companies that did maintenance and services for the HOA and its members. Someone got smart and started asking questions, started to press their rights, and it eventually, oh, I was told, it ended up in court. It only got resolved mid last year. But after her friends got it to find out they've been overcharging, overpaying, and writing things off that should never have been done without any kind of approval. It's currently being overseen by a judge at the moment, 
but it does look like some of those people are gonna start going to the Gray Bar Hotel for a while. I was telling her about my parents' place and how we used to take our bikes down the street, etc. And she told me that street has been completely demolished and replaced with a double-wide street, etc., with houses on both ends. They want to put in a gate, but the town said there's streets that are maintained by the town. You cannot prohibit free access, which was another garbage show as well, which at the town about three years back. That HOA was just a hot garbage fire, and what eventually did them in was poor accounting, embezzlement, and cronyism. When I looked for my first house, I made it very clear absolutely no homeowners associations, no radon, no leasing, etc. That's a quagmire of hate and anger that you don't want. The more I read into the history of an HOA, I realized that it was formed to keep minorities out of an area, and there's still a lot of deeds out there that have these weird no minority or African American stipulations still built into them. I didn't get it and I don't want to. I thought it was hilarious, and that tire eventually cost me about 200 bucks to get replaced. The second story is, my boss called me into the office and accused me of calling OSHA. This happened early summer 2021. I've worked for a small wood shop for seven years. It's my profession of choice because I enjoy being a craftsman. Not only do I enjoy it, but the schedule is easy and I can come and go as I please as long as I keep up, which is not a problem for me at all. A new owner took over two years ago now and working conditions have gone downhill. Like any new owner that wants to make a mark on his new company, he came in, bought a bunch of fancy new equipment, and rearranged the shop to accommodate. Sounds great, but all tools were running off of extension cords run through the ceiling afterwards. Air hoses daisy chained across the shop floor. To get to workstations, and dust collection didn't get hooked up for an extended period. Basic safety as simple as safety glasses and hearing protection are no longer observed, as a required practice these days. And many machines have had safety sensors bypassed because of malfunction or convenience. Add in a makeshift, illegal spray booth in a garage area, and you have an SH hole that's covered in dust and fumes with machines that could crush someone not paying attention, or trip on an air hose into its path. So one day I get called into the office and the boss says, so I just got a letter from OSHA. I know it was you. Why are you trying to sabotage me? This was the most inappropriate conversation I'd ever had with an employer, and that's literally all I kept repeating as he tried to grill me and get me to fess up. I knew who called. They told me days before and they wanted me to call too. So I did call after that interrogation and added some more things to the list. I figure if I'm going to be accused of it, I might as well be guilty. The next few months were hell. I was put on BS duties and trained replacements in my normal areas of work. Somehow any time off requests I had were somehow lost and I was given verbal warnings for attendance even though I was working the same number of hours I always had and coming in at the same time and leaving at the same time. I wanted to quit so bad but I didn't let him bully me out of a job. I enjoyed with a great schedule. OSHA helped me with the retaliation and put him on notice. He also fixed the major issues pretty fast too. The place is still an SH hole, but at least it's safe enough now until I can find something comparable. Don't hesitate with your safety at work. Don't let anyone bully you into working in unsafe conditions. Don't ignore your coworkers when they see the same problems. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out and hit the like button to support the channel.